What's up YouTube? In this video, I'm going to be showing you the ins and outs of Airtable forms. So that means the conditional fields, pre-filling forms, and also looking at all the customization and data types and field types that you can have in your Airtable forms. Without further ado, we'll get into the video. All right, so getting right into it, the form we will be making today is a common form used in really any management system, lots of CRMs, and many client fulfillment processes. So it's essentially an after action report or a client in interaction input form. So I already made a copy of what it might look like in the end, and I added some branding for myself up here, and I can show you what it looks like when I open it up, and this is essentially what we'll be making. So it'll have a few options in here like linking or like the notes field, and it's a really good form to use after you have a call with someone or after you have a call with a client, especially you come in here and say what the call was about when it was who you are and who the client was, and then give a little description that way. It, when it comes back into your database, then it comes into this spreadsheet and you can track all of your interactions with every client. You can have them nicely organized here and especially in Airtable where it's very user friendly, you can have a lot of visibility into all of your data. So that is why I like Airtable forms because Airtable forms inputs directly into Airtable without any other integrations. And I'll show you how to make a form. So you come over here by create a view on the left hand side and you click create a form and it'll look and it will look something like this. So for us, we're going to put client interactions. And right off the bat, when you create your form, all of the original fields from your, like all of your data, they will all come in unless they are a formula field or an auto number, which those auto populate. There may as well, there may be some others as well, but I know for a fact that auto number and the formula field will auto generate because they depend on other fields being created or creating like a list for auto numbers case but all of the other fields where it's a user input required those will automatically be pulled in so you can see we have two single select fields here we also have a place for a description and if you have a pro plan you can do a logo and if you have a pro plan you can also come down here and you can like redirect your url and you can do like custom branding if you don't want the Airtable logo there just turn click that and it'll turn off and we also want to add a description, so you can insert your description here. And this is more for you guys, not for the person filling out this form because they won't be able to edit this, they won't be able to edit the title, and they won't be able to edit your custom branding at the top of it either. But what, we, what they can edit is the options in here. So they can do these linked fields, which will show up as ads right off the bat, but they'll become, be able to come in here and click these. They'll also be able to click the type of interaction, the mode of interaction, the date, and add any notes and a link. And we have this other field down here. I don't really want this other field down here. So if you don't want a field that you have in your table to be in your form, you can either move it all the way to the bottom and hope nobody sees it. But what I would highly recommend doing is just removing it, the field from your form. And to do that, you come over here and click remove field from form. And then it will show up over here. You could also come in here and remove all and then add them one by one in the order that you want and really customize your form that way. So luckily the two single select fields that we want in the top are already at the top, but the type of form that doesn't really help me much. So I want to give a little bit more description into what this is. So I don't want to choose an option right now, but this is essentially the topic of the meeting. And this will just give a little bit more of an insight for the person filling out this form on what it should be. And we also want this to be a list so that they can easily see all of these meeting, all of these meeting topics and they don't have to go open up that single select. Whereas for the mode of interaction, we're going to leave that one as a single select just to show you guys what they look like. And we also want this to be required. So if you want to require your employees or whoever is filling out the form to answer a question, you have to check this for every single question, which is kind of nice that you get that customization. So I will click required for all of the ones that I want. So date and time, this one's a very nice one. So I can come in here and say like I did an hour ago and pick nearly the exact time. And I also want to make sure these are required as well. 
but for notes and for link that that stuff is kind of extra i really care about like this information this is the really good data that i want to be tracking to see what we're meeting like what the meeting types are with clients to make sure we had that kind of a meeting and who's meeting with them so i can ask them if i have any questions or if the client comes back and has any questions about that meeting i can go to that person and ask them so that all looks good i would suggest adding like your company logo up at the top but we also have these fields down here and for link we won't always have a link that one's going to be a conditional field so i'll show you how to do a conditional field now so to do a conditional field you come in here and you click on the question and you come down and click show field only when conditions are met and this is essentially the same thing as using a filter in any of your tables so you can set essentially the same parameters here so for us it's going to be when the mode of interaction is a few certain certain ones in here and if you want to add one afterwards like if you wanted to come in and add a mode of interaction you would just go back to your all data all of your data and you could add that in there and that would auto populate whereas if you added another field that field would be stuck over here until you add it in but for loom zoom an email and a call so say we have like skype calling we might record that those might have a link but text never will so i don't want them to even have the hassle of thinking about this if that's the case so we will do when the mode of interaction is any of these the ones that i select so it can be a text i can link to an email and i can link to both of these any of the recordings for those so that's how you make a conditional field. It's essentially the same as filtering records in your Airtable tables and bases. And you can add multiple conditions as well. So if I wanted to make it only when it's a free consultation with any of those, because that's the, say that's the only time you might record. So we might say, just to give them a little bit more information here. But you can do many many conditions to your field like that or if you have a quiz like have each question pop up after the previous one was answered you can do stuff like that too so we also have something in here with the client contact and this is another sort of condition that we wanted to apply is we don't want whoever's filling out this form to be able to see all of our clients we only want them to be coaching clients to so say that's someone who's only dealing with those coaching clients and they don't need to see the others they don't need to accidentally pick the others so what we can do is we can limit this record selection to a view and so you would have to have data in your client entities or client contacts or both to show which ones are coaching and then what it says down here is you have to limit it to a view so i would come in here for client contacts or for client entities and i would add information saying that it's a view so i added industry here and you can use it that way for like for coaching so say i wanted to sort it only by coaching and so that they're not also in the form so that they're not picking a client out of one table and a client entity like the company out of a different table i like to link these records and use Airtable's relational database and then once you link the records you can come in here and add a lookup field to look up the industry from the company. You can come in here and create a new view that is, that is filtered by only the coaching. So when they fill out this form, it'll be for a specific person who can only see the coaching clients and they will only see the people in this view. So for us, that is John Doe and Jane Doe. So if we go and test out this form, we'll test out some of these features. So right now we don't see a link anywhere, but if we come up here and I believe we picked, could be a loom or it could also be a free consultation. You can see that a link to recording came in down here. And for client contact, we can see that it's your name, company two, John Doe or Jane Doe because we did not edit that. So if we come down here and go to client contact, we want to limit this record selection to a view. So we can change that to coaching and then come back to our field, back to our form. I'll just come back here and I'll reload it. And that will clear all the information back out. So free consultation, it was a loom. We recorded it on loom. 
And now I can only see these two because I limited that record selection to a view. That was only the coaching companies. And you can't see their coaching on here, but you can filter whatever information based on your primary field, which there's a video on my channel on how to change your primary field, but this is what you see in the primary field. So that is what you see on here. So we'll also go ahead and test and see if this works out. So we'll say it was about an hour ago. So right around 6 p.m. We will also add one of our two coaching clients and we'll add myself because I'm the one filling out the form and we don't need to do any notes or links. It's not required right now. And we will submit that. So that is the stock message as well is thank you for submitting the form. You can come down here and customize this and delete the exclamation point and you can put whatever. So you can put dash you can make it a quote or something like that. So if I come back here, I can see company one free consultation. You can see all this information. If we just expand the record, that's an easy way to see it. And yeah, you can see the hidden fields as well, but we didn't need field 11 and this is just a lookup field. So this is all the information. That's like the basics for filling down a form. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into a little bit more advanced feature and that's pre-filling a form. So pre-filling a form is not for beginners, but if you want to learn, there's a resource down in the description that goes through this, but I will also walk you through it in this video. So as this resource says, you need a question mark, and this is at the end of your URL. So for a URL, this is pretty short right now, but if we reload this URL, we will be able to edit it and add the pre-fill that we want. So I want to pre-fill my name so I can just keep this URL so that whenever I open this, it's always going to be pre-filled with my information so that that just takes another step out of my process. So I'll add a question mark. So we can see we need a question mark and then the word pre-fill and then an underline. The underline is similar in all of them. So we'll type that. Oh. So question mark, prefill, underline, and then this is the field name. So we will come down here and that's optimize contact. And for the spaces, you want to do pluses. And then it's an equal sign and then whatever you want it to prefill with. So for us, we're going to do Ben plus green. And you can also, there's also another option for URLs for spaces. You can do a percent 20. So what that looks like is if you come in here and delete the plus sign and you do percent 20, and that will come up with the same space in there as well. So you can see it already pulled in my information. And so this would be the example of a pre-filled form. So if you copy that, I can bookmark it or you can edit that or you can put it in a like function so that it pulls in that information based on whichever employee is using that link and then send it to everybody. That's always a pretty nice one. But I hope that was helpful. I hope you now know how to pre-fill forms and use all of these different form features, conditional fields, link, linking only to specific views. And if you have any questions, throw them down in the comments. And if you need any help building out your forms or building out your databases, there's a link in the description for www.optimize.is and you can request a time to speak with me or my team. And we would love to help you out and give you the solutions that you need to free up your time and, and get you to the next level in your business. I hope that was helpful and go ahead and watch the next video if you want to learn more about how to use Airtable.